Entheogenesis australis has created this series of short videos describing a number of species of psilocybe and allied species found in Australia. In this video, I'm going to introduce and discuss the temperate species Psilocybe cyberiginosa. Hello, my name is Kane Barlow. I'm an Australian mycologist. I have a particular interest in the genus Psilocybe, particularly Australian species. Uh, Psilocybe cyberiginosa is a really well known Australian species occurring in southeast Australia. It's an autumn and winter fruiting mushroom. It has a beautiful caramel brown cap, white to grey stem, and younger specimens have a partial veil. It has a hygrophonous cap, which means that the cap changes colour as it dries out. This can be quite distinct, going from like a really dark chocolate brown colour to almost cream, almost white. The species is heavily associated with Psilocybe cyanesins and Psilocybe azurescens. They're, they're very closely related and they can look quite similar. There's quite often a little bit of confusion around, around these three species. From a pharmacology perspective, uh, Picker and Ricards in 1971 uh, reported that there was psilocybin to 0.47% dry weight. In 1981, Perkel uh, reported uh, psilocybin between 0.6% to 1.93% by dry weight. The first herbarium collection of Psilocybe cyberiginosa was made by John Burton Cleland in 1915. Uh, during the following years, he, he and colleagues collected them from South Australia, New South Wales, and Victoria. He named and described Cyberiginosa formally in 1927. Uh, and the description was republished in his two volume books on postals and mushrooms from South Australia uh, in 1934 and 1935. The species was confirmed as containing psilocybin in 1971 uh, by Picker and Ricards. In 1974, Roy Watling, the Scottish mycologist, made collections of Psilocybe australiana, Psilocybe eucalypta, and Psilocybe tasmaniana from New South Wales and Tasmania. All four were synonymised as Cyberiginosa by Chang and Mills in 1992. Uh, and then in 1995, uh, Psilocybe Tasmaniana was removed by Johnson and Buchanan. Psilocybe Cyberiginosa is found in wet and dry eucalyptus forests and occasionally on the edge of rainforests. Uh, they particularly enjoy growing on eucalyptus, uh, but they're also quite often found in pine plantations. Uh, they have a reputation for growing in wood chipped garden beds as well in urban settings. They're found in Tasmania, Victoria, New South Wales, South Australia, in southwest Western Australia as an introduced species, uh, and they're now reported to occur in southeast Queensland as well. Uh, we know them also from New Zealand, where they're very, very closely related to the endemic species there, Psilocybe waroa. They're, they require coal to fruit. So for fruiting to happen, the temperature needs to drop between six to eight degrees C. They fruit between April to May to July to August, uh, climate permitting. Uh, in an oceanic environment, they will fruit earlier, so late March even to April. Uh, but in the more Mediterranean environment, say uh, inner Victoria, South Australia, we expect this more around May. This is an example of wet sclerophyll forest. You can see the eucalyptus, you can see the man ferns, uh, Antarctica dixonii. Uh, and you might also have a few rainforest trees as well, Bedfordia, for example. Uh, then we also have dry sclerophyll. Uh, the photograph shown here is, is very dry, 
Uh, with lots of rain, this, this can be, become quite wet, well saturated, uh, and, and Solosomy superorganized said loves this. Um, in this situation, you, you're also quite possibly more likely to find it on the edge of the forest rather than right in the middle. But it's always worth looking. So taxonomically speaking, uh, the cap is one to six centimetres in diameter. This beautiful caramel brown, as I mentioned earlier, drying to yellow, sometimes light as, as cream. The cap is conical to convex. Uh, it uplifts in age and it has quite a prominent umbo. The gill attachment is adnate to adnext. The stem, anywhere between 4.5 to 22 centimetres long. They're really quite firm and, and quite fibrous. White in colour, turning grey with age, uh, and then often brown when waterlogged. They have a really beautiful white partial veil. Uh, this can either disappear or quite often leaves a trace around the edge of the cap. Solosomy brews when damaged and Solosomy spirogonosa can bruise really quite strongly. Here are some examples of Solosomy spirogonosa in their habitats. Uh, on the left you can see the white partial veil, the remnants around the edge of the cap and quite a lot of, of the black purple spores still attached to that, that sticky partial veil. You can see this also on the right uh, and particularly in the and in the right bottom right hand corner you can see that uplifted cap with this sinusoidal appearance uh, hence the confusion with Solosomy cyanesens. This is an example of Solosomy subarachnosa in habitat growing from really well colonized eucalyptus branch uh, and, and they love growing up through grass clumps uh, and you can see this here quite quite distinctly. Every now and then you'll find them growing in really heavy clumps. Usually they're either singly or in, in little groups uh, but in this case th these are really heavily clumped together uh, and indicative of, of really nutritious substrate. This photo shows their features really well. You can see that umbo on the, on the top of the cap, uh, the white partial veil around the edge, beautiful white stem, and you can see this gray appearance and also assumedly some of that blue bruising. The white gills that will in time turn kind of browny, brown, browny gray, uh, and at the base of the stem, uh, some some mycelium. Uh, the thing with Solosomy subarachnosa is there are quite a few lookalikes and some of these are poisonous, um, particularly in the case of Gallerina, uh, potentially deadly. Uh, also Cortinarius, also potentially deadly. Uh, Hypholoma fiscicula uh, is poisonous. Uh, and then there are other species, Foliota, uh, Protostropheria semiglobata, uh, Gymnopilus, and Loradiomyces cerez can also look similar. The, the image here on the right hand side, uh, you can see Loradiomyces cerez growing right next to a, a clump of uh, Seberogonosa. So, Solosobi Seberogonosa, the pronunciation varies a lot with individuals. Um, I tend to go with, I used to say psilocybe, uh, but I, this was corrected through uh, being exposed to other genus names, Kynosobi, for example, uh, hence psilocybe. Seberogonosa is a bit of a mouthful. I tend to break it down into little groups, so sub, eru, gin. Osa. But if you feel comfortable saying it in a particular way, then feel free to do that. Thank you for joining me today as we've explored a number of Australian psilocybe species.